Hey guys, so this video is us reading the replies in the comments of one of our videos, The Lawful Good, Eldridge Abomination. If you haven't watched it, go watch it already. And this is your comments that we're reading in relation to that video. <laughs> and if you don't know the premise, essentially it's abominations, like Eldridge horrors, that are actually kind of friendly, kind of nice. And they do, they, they do, they do good. They mean well, so they do. They do mean well. But let's get into it. From Egg Guy 20 Nice name. Nice. <laughs> Imagine the local teenage girl is ready for her prom date during a high school night. She takes one last minute look at herself in the mirror before deciding that she's ready. Her date is sitting on the couch talking to her dad, just as she says she's ready. Walks down the stairs in the most beautiful prom dress and the date gets the rose pin ready and puts it on. Before the both of them can walk out the door, the lights go off. A strange light emits from the kitchen as quiet gibberish starts to get louder and louder. The young man is trying to reach for the doorknob, but his vision becomes more and more confusing as the off-world figure starts to get closer. The prom date looks out the corner of his eye and tries to make out what he sees, but the figure's appearance keeps changing every time he tries to make out what it's wearing. He starts getting nervous as it's reaching out for him, as he tries to grip the doorknob, as his head starts to hurt, as his surroundings starts changing colour and form. He can't bring himself to cry because he can only let out a squeak. Before the figure can touch him, the dad speaks out. Good God, Susan, his mind can't acknowledge your form. Just send him some meal tomorrow and he'll be able to see you. You're breaking the poor kid on our daughter's special day. <laughs> oh, sweet God. <laughs> <laughs> by Joel Gone. I'm kneeling by my bed, praying like I do every night. But this night I'm praying for my daughter, who currently lies comatose and slowly dying in a hospital bed, while my wife watches over her. Our son and youngest daughter are sleeping, soundly down the hall. Suddenly a sickening light fills the room from behind me, and I feel a presence wash over me with the potency of a miasma. The smell that accompanies it is maddeningly familiar, but sickeningly sweet. I vomit profusely into the sheets, emptying the meagre contents of my stress-limited dinner of hospital cafe food onto the bedspread. Every instinct in my body tells me not to turn around, while my curiosity begs me to do so. When I finally turn, a cry of horror, shock and despair forces itself from between my cracked lips. I glimpse a body covered in a multitude of eyes, covered in a stalk-like body that's emanating the unlight that now fills the room. A horde of waving, twitching tendrils, dripping with revolting, oily mucus from a barrier around the creature's base, and a vertical slit lined with what could only vaguely be described as teeth opens revealing a tongue compromised of leaf-like appendages that wave and flutter around as this thing makes a sound that leaves me shaking, frozen in stark terror. Barely, my fractured mind pieces together a few English words in the terrible, horrific din. Be not afraid. I bring you glad tidings. Your prayers have reached the Father. Your beloved daughter will awaken tomorrow. The doctors will find nothing wrong with her, and she will be cleared to leave the day after, with only one night of observation. The thing suddenly disappears, and I'm left alone, shuddering and crying like a child in my pool of my own sweat and vomit. That was really good. I really liked that. I well, really it was, a lot, it. It was yeah. a lot nicer than any of the other ones. A lot of the other ones are kind of just, like, slightly helpful, whereas yeah. this is more like a biblical angel type yeah. of thing going on. From Annie Bot 4573. I've never believed in monsters. Even when I was a child, I would laugh at horror movies, and even now, the thought of a stalker challenging me in an alleyway brings a smile to my face. What? What? Hold <laughs> up, hold up. <laughs> but one day, everything changed, and monsters became real. Wait, is this one of those ones where you leap the leapest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Some call it the apocalypse. Others call it the eldritch invasion. But all I saw was creatures dreamt up in only the most ludicrous of drug fueled night terrors. At the sight of them, some screamed, some went insane, and some would even kill themselves on the spot. But only in the most extreme cases. Some people literally as cruel as humanly possible. Even take a liking to tormenting these new creatures because it's not like they're people. One day on my way home from work, I heard an unearthly scream. Like a pig being slaughtered crossed with eerie child laughter. And I raced to intervene. I saw a gang of teenagers firing BB guns at a creature in a dress. In place of arms, it had one horse leg on one side and a two foot long burning wick and a three finger glass arm in the other. Its torso looked more doll-like than man. 
Its long black locks of hair had bare eyeballs on the end, like 13 separate stalks of swaying snakes and four legs. It had two backward knee animal legs, one looking more like a bull leg and the other one more like a praying mantis arm. The creature was crouching against a wall behind a large dumpster as three boys shot at it mercilessly. When I approached, I felt no guilt nor shame in breaking their arms or noses. They got what was coming to them. I helped the creature up. Only then did I see its face. Actually, quite nice if you can get past the seven eyes of varying sizes. Are you all right? I asked it. And it looked at me with what I could barely read to be surprised. They ask, what is Abconis? None ask, how is Abconis? <laughs> I love that name. It was then that I realised the real monsters are the people we meet along the way. And that's how I met your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's quite, that's actually quite good. I like that, I like that. From comment section, man. The wheels turning in my head told me to run, to get up and grab the chair to use as a weapon. In with a steel chair. Yeah. But I was frozen still. Before me stood a shambling mass of putrid, writhing, reddish-purple worms and tendrils forming a human silhouette, like a shadow cast from standing near a light, encoaching ever near. I silently prayed to God who would never return an answer. No God would exist to create such grotesque creatures. It smelled like a pot of stew left in an abandoned corner of a building, but somehow a fishy smell was coming through as well. One of its slimy fingers, if you could call a three-pronged appendage at the end of an uncanny biomass of finger, slowly moved towards the middle of my brow. My mind's eye was opened as it stated one simple sentence. Your family is looking forward to you arriving to Christmas dinner this year. They are proud of you. As they should be. <laughs> By Robert Williams. He was so sick of it. Life is a pain and people are monsters. It would be better if we were all cold and dead than living in this hell. He thought as he choked out the twisted words that made his brain itch and his ears bleed. When at last he spat the final verse, he drove deep the rusty dagger and watched as a gaping wound tore open in space. The unlight that shone from it tore at his mind and devoured his very soul. It was a good pain, like tearing the skin off an itch he couldn't scratch. In the unlight, he saw every atrocity humanity had ever committed, every wicked word, every vile act of debauchery, and brutal acts of violence he couldn't imagine before. Surely this beast brought judgment for all our sins, he laughed. Yet, as he looked, he saw more. He saw the butcher's mother cry over their fallen sons. He saw victims forgive their tormentors and tormented men forgive themselves. He watched butchers return home to the family they fought for. He then watched every kind act and loving gesture ever shared. This thing that was older than time had watched over mankind since we took our first steps. And it loved us, in spite of our weaknesses, in spite of his failures that loved him. It held him as he cried himself to sleep. Then it silently shut the door as it left. He knew when he woke, the worst of mankind could love and were loved themselves. He knew that humanity had been judged. And he knew that the Watchers couldn't be more proud. That's very good. Is it, that a part? Did you write that yourself? Because that's very good. I think that sounds like... Is that from something? <laughs> hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on... You can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. <laughs> so either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. <laughs> and like, let's be serious. The models are pretty based looking. So once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties. <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. From Solence. I'm sitting at my kitchen table, a bottle and a glass in each hand. This month had been pretty bad for me. Lost my job, bills piling up, and I just got news that my brother passed away. I'm on the edge now, and I'm not sure I can continue. Then I hear it from the living room, a hissing noise that seems otherworldly and wrong. It seeps into my skin and I can't move. I won't move. My very being screams that I'm in danger, but I can't muster the strength to stand. The hissing is slowly becoming a low, gut-wrenching groan that claws at my eardrums as it gets louder. It's here now, right on top of me. It leans in over me with a pressure that leaves me unable to breathe. 
I begin to sob, feeling true dread and fear for the first time in my adult life. As the tears stream down my face, I see what looks like a mangled human hand bend inward in a horribly unnatural way. It grabs the bottle and glass from my hands, and with a voice akin to madness itself, I hear, You shouldn't drink so much, Jason. It's bad for your health. Just like that, it's gone. And so was my booze. I don't think I'll ever drink again. But one thought still haunts me. How did it know my name? Thief and wee fuck. <laughs> don't take my book, eh? <laughs> By Dark CT. Another death in the family. Incredibly down. So much so, the friends aren't even about for now. Over the last few days, a friggin' splitting headache. Oh boy, even better. Yesterday, it's gotten even worse. I'm hearing whispers and random whistling, and I can't tell where from. This morning I wake up and there's eyes and mouths all over my bedroom ceiling. As I run and scream, slamming the door behind me, I hear the mouths whistling, and in unison, singing the words. Always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> As I flee. <laughs> the terror. The terror. <laughs> By Sakyun Arn. Probably butchering that, but okay. <laughs> we'll work with it. Okay. A few years back, I was in my darkest hours. Lost my job and my flat. Couldn't do more. And I didn't have any money. I have no close relatives. So after a few weeks, I had to stop the couch crash. Thankfully, it was during the spring. So my nights, while fucking horribly cold, uncomfortable and smelly, weren't that bad yet. I lived at my own place for a few months, trying to keep my dignity. But with the coming of fall and winter, the nights became colder and colder until I just couldn't find it in myself to sleep. My dreams were populated with hellish visions of ghoulish marine landscapes and night terror incarnate. I felt a horrible weight in my bust during those dreams, and the nocturne stench grew worse and worse. Night had fallen early, and despite my best efforts to clean myself at local fountains and university restrooms, a horrible smell kept following me. A smell like rotten, aging fish, a few times more rancid, and stuck to the throat. No one likes a dirty, smelly hobo, so I couldn't get any food, and the other homeless guys at the shelter were shady at best, absolutely fucking raving at worst. It sapped my will to go on. I knew the winter took lives. I kinda knew that I was too much of a wimp to survive. It led to a few dark days, and well, I took the decision to take my life, but I didn't want to suffer. I risked missing, which would be gruesome, or do it in front of others. I was considering suicide by freezing water, as I was walking on a bridge when I saw a glimpse of something, taking over my reflection. The malformed apparition, a crawling mass of moving algae and maggots, contorting an ever-changing pattern of movement from its uncountable, emaciated appendages. Crooked, pale arms addressed me from the darkness of the water. Its smell was unbearable, but recognisable. I knew, just by looking at it, that the smell that stuck to me was it watching me, peering into our reality and gazing into my soul, clinging on me. With seventeen obsidian eyes arranged in a crown, never closing, it looked at me. Then, from the nothing it inhabited, took a subway sandwich, with one of its skeletal arms devoid of any articulation to make it emerge from the reflection. It elongated slowly, producing a gut-wrenching noise of bone breaking. Its arm was still right and rigid like a pole when it came to my level. I was without any word, hesitating between just fleeing on the spot, vomiting on the ground, or accepting the offering. It just waited, and then put the sandwich gently on the railing, then the card. The arm then just slowly and disgustingly went back into the water to repeat this pattern, this time with a cookie. Its voice, a noisy collection of wet, fleshy noises, pained howling of despair, and water flowing became intelligible in the back of my mind. You have so much more to live for, Anon. It is not yet time to join me. You have such a good heart. Please don't let this time of hardship harden it. Then it dissipated. I think that I just fainted at this point, because I just remember waking up under the same bridge after a horrible nightmare, in a warm mound of algae and silky wild goose feathers. My sandwich still in its paper bag, warm to the touch. The card which contained a strange symbol that made my head hurt, and the cookie. I still have these nightmares, and the smell still follows me sometimes, and I still have really shitty days. But I don't ever consider suicide. I don't want to see it back. I don't think I'll ever be ready to die. I ain't having no Subway sandwich from Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> 
I don't it's know. your man. It's it's the pedal guy. Yeah. <laughs> Coming out of the lake. I don't know. What what would you guys do? Would you guys eat a subway sandwich Much from, from a, a algae monster? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> it's a lovely offer. No, it's a very nice offer of you. Me but... marinara. <laughs> yeah, sorry, mate. It's going to be a no from me, okay? From tough eyes. I tumbled off a cliff, dropped in the dreamlands, and the fall was better than what was behind me. After what felt like months, I could finally end my nightmare and wake up to my own life again. Suddenly, a black wingspan swung down from above me, and bony onyx hands with a grip like a vice snatched onto my arms. I howled in pain as a flap above my head stopped my fall, and I was then flying securely in the clutches of this dark monstrosity. And then I saw its face, with the head having some horrible angular taper that made its chin the tip of a deformed triangle. A crude mockery of a human face looked down at me, with no eyes. Skin the shade of sooty coal came down from the forehead, completely smoothed over where the eyes should be. Its teeth had constant rictus, for this being had no lips. It clicked its tongue against its sharp predator maw and chitted. <laughs> hey man, I <laughs> offer. Don't go dropping off about these clips here. <laughs> oh, God, <don't> dear. Do <laughs> don't go dropping off about these clips here, eh? <laughs> you die here and you die in your real world, too. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very helpful. Very helpful. By Patrick Cisneros. It was a Saturday morning when it happened. I was out for a stroll in the local park to clear my head from the busy work week, minding my own business. Suddenly, the trees began to rot and the grass conflagulated while the smell of decay bashed me in the face, nearly knocking me out. People seemed to scream, laugh, wither, and grow unannounced appendages when they saw the cause of this reality shift. I was paralysed with fear, but my body began turning towards the figure against my will. It stood three metres tall and walked on five legs. It seemed to grow eye stalks every second, with newer ones replacing decaying ones as an unending cycle. There was no head but had many mouths with spittle and drool that burnt the ground it walked on. This was the decay. This was the rot. This was the insanity that made me want to peel my face off and gouge my eyes out. The being slid its way towards me, opening its maw of a thousand writhing tongues and grated gnashing teeth and said, You really should treat yourself and relax more often, man. I think the stress is starting to get to your hairline and we both know how the missus says you're becoming more like your father. <laughs> That's not even funny. My hair is fucking in tatters. I'm gonna look like King Dankula within two years. This is the reason why he wears hats in all his fucking videos. <laughs> well, I feel like some of them were pointed towards me. To be honest with you, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Some of you guys are really good at writing. Yeah, I thought some of you guys are particularly good. I, I was quite happy with that. Um, that was one of the better ones that we've had whenever we've asked for, like, you know, guidance, and we got that many of them. Like, no, we're definitely doing them. You guys really went out there for yeah. them, and I think they pulled out all the stops. Some of the stories were so good. Yeah. The writing I couldn't get over. I really want to go back to the original thread, so what I think what we might do is we'll do this, then we'll go back to the original the thread, thread, and then if you guys want to add more of your own stories, we'll. We'll do another one because I just love the yeah. I, I just really like the premise of this. Yeah, I really Personally, like it. I just think it's kind of like a cool story. Hook. It's, it. a, it's a good story hook that anyone could really do something with. Yeah. You know, I don't know about you, but I definitely wouldn't be taking a subway sandwich. No, from I a, wouldn't. From an elf abomination. <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. That got me that But one. as always, check out all the links, check out our website, hit subscribe, and while you're up there, hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we post. Really helps us out a lot. Really helps you, us you out. You guys know what YouTube's like. There's no point in us garden about it, you know what I mean? It does help us out a lot. If you enjoy what we do here, we would very Let much us know. We would definitely <laughs> appreciate it. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.